Hello everyone, Sifu Tommy here today with my student Hui and today we're going to address the technique of Jam Sao, the sinking hand. If you go back a couple of weeks in this YouTube channel, then you will see that I spoke about the four core techniques of Wing Chun. These four core techniques consist of Tan Sao, of Kao Sao, of the technique Jam Sao that we're going to cover now and of another technique that you will see in next week's episode. So today everything is about I'm dealing with an, with an uh, opponent who is striking to the head. He's not striking along a straight fashion but he's actually going up with his hand and thereby breaking the resistance of my arm over here. So the scenario may look as follows. You're just about to get into a fight and you have a guy who lifts up his arms. It's regardless if I have my arms here or if I have them here, it's helpful if you want to go into jump so that you get contact from the outside though and that you're not at the inside. Remember, whenever you get contact at the outside of your arm, tanso is what comes to play, what comes into play. But when you are over here, you get contact at the inside, then you want to get the contact here. So the first thing you do is you reach out with your arms in order to read what is going on here. Or, which would even be better obviously, to hit him right away. However, if you have to use jump cell, it means that the punch has not reached his head, obviously, right? So I want to punch him, he punches me, and I get in contact with him. And it doesn't really matter where I get the contact. I can get it here by the elbow or somewhere between the wrist and the elbow or at the hand. But what happens is I go down with it. Now, the part that goes down, and this may be a shock for a lot of you out there, is not necessarily the elbow. It is more the wrist. The reason being, when I get contact with the partner and I bring my wrist down, then the trajectory of his arm is still toward me. And still, since I'm not able to, um, to go against the force of a stronger opponent, this will break my angle here, right? So even when you're in Chi Sao and the guy attacks you here and I bring my wrist down, his arm is still very, very, very close to me. So you're missing out on one thing and that is that the contact point is the wrist. The contact point may be the lower arm. The contact point, all right, may be the elbow and if he strikes now, then yes, it makes a lot of sense to bring the elbow down. But in most scenarios, especially if you use the traditional training method of Dan Chi Sao, you have the contact at the wrist. Right? So if he attacks my, oh yeah, that's another common mistake. A lot of people attack with the palm to the chest. However, if somebody attacks me to the chest, first of all, why? I think you want to end, you want to end the fight and not just, you know, scratch his chest hair or something like that, right? So when you get attacked to the chest, all you need to do is come in with a punch from the second set of the chum cue form, which intercepts the center line. Yeah, remember in the first set, uh, in the second set of the first form, the sinum tau, we learn how to hit along the center line, whereas in the second set of the second form, the chum cue form, we learn how to intercept the center line. Just a recap of that right quickly, when you step in with a Sionum Tao punch, then my idea would be to hit from the side, thereby leading you astray and while at the same time hitting you. So this arm, one more time please, is getting diverted to the side and I'm able, do it again please, to hit him, pow, with full force here. Back to the jump cell scenario. So we are here about to get into a fight, right? And I have managed to somehow get contact with his arms. Now, he hits me up to the nose. And because something is coming up to my nose, I have to direct his force, right? The last thing you wanna do is if something comes towards you, to go against it. Obviously, these would be, this would be two colliding forces. That's the thing you really want to avoid. So something has to happen. You have to divide it to the side, to the side, or upward. Or, as we do in this scenario, downward. And this is where Jam So is the perfect companion. So, once again, if you practice palms to the chest, right, then all you want to do is you want to hit the guy right away. So if this is a punch that's being hit to the ribcage or whatever, then you just go low and you hit him from here. Okay? If he hits me to the chest, same thing. I just hit him and I use the low elbow of my arm, boom, to finish off the scenario. But if he hits high, then my punch will end up here somewhere and he's going to end up in my face and that's what I want to avoid. So whenever you feel something coming up, you have to get it down. 
And the part that gets it down is the contact point, not the part of your arm that doesn't even have contact with uh, your partner's arm. So when I feel that the contact is somewhere here in my hand, for example, of course I use my hand, I use my fingers. If it's my wrist, I use my wrist. If it's a bit lower, I use that part of my arm. If he's, by my, if he's down by my elbow, all right, I use this. And if he punches diagonally, then I use cow salt, the way that we did in the previous video. So now a lot of people say, yes, but when you push down, then of course you open the gap so the guy can come in and hit you to the face with a roundhouse. That's true, but that's exactly what we want to do. Let's recap what we do in Danchi. In Danchi, we begin here. The guy comes in with the palm, I go into jump saw, and of course this gives him the chance to go around and hit me, which is why the very first exercise that we have in Danchi is the side change. I begin from the outside and after his attack on my defense, all of a sudden I'm at the inside. Now, this is perfect for me. I mean, just imagine, right? He goes down, he tries to hit me, and this opens the gap fantastically. There are so many things I can do. Let's just do a couple of examples for this. Let's just stand like this, okay? You attack me, I go down and you give me a roundhouse punch. I could do this. I could do this. I could do this. I could do this. There's so much stuff that you can do from there. So don't be afraid of that. You want to push him down so that you're able to strike, to counter right after this, right? Guy attacks, I go, boom, go right in. One more time, attack, boom, go right in. Get the contact here, boom, 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 go right in. So this is very fast, it's super aggressive. Of course, when we practice this, we do it in a nice manner and we do it in a way that doesn't hurt the opponent, but this is some nasty shit, guys, <laughs> all right? So, I mean, especially what happens afterward. Let's say he makes use of my downward motion and then imagine what happens here. That's it for his bicep, that's it for the side of his throat. Right? There's so many things that you can do, pow, that hurt him like crazy. So you want to go down. I'm sorry, I hope I didn't hear, hit you. <laughs> Good. So let's say we're here and he hits and I do this. Now before he can go around, whoom, my strike has to be there. And here is the second component of jump cell. After you go down, look what happens to my arm when I release. You shoot right away. So it's not that I sink down and then I rest there. If I do that, I deserve to get hit, right? So you want to make sure that there is boom, there is pressure in it. So when you feel that the guy goes around, you are the first one to hit him and you go right to the throat. And then from there, after this, you can follow up with punches to the throat or with whatever you want to do afterward. Here's another sidebar. I keep getting the most stupid of comments. Like for example, I have a video that focuses on cow cell. So I demonstrate cow cell and then I hit the guy with chain punches and I do it in a nice fashion by not closing my hand, by not demolishing his throat and stuff like that. And then people say, oh, it's so cute. Those doggy punches that you do. What are they supposed to do? Dude, really? Okay, so if I elbow him, if I eye gouge him, if I punch him, to these very vulnerable parts, of course, it is going to be extremely uh, lethal. But these are my guys, these are my boys, I don't wanna hurt them, right? So when you see stuff like that, of course, I'm not going to injure my partner, okay? But that just as a sidebar, back on topic. So let's recap one more time. We have contact to the opponent's limbs, right? He strikes and I'm able to go down and hit right away. Now, the height, really depends a little bit on the position of his arm. If his arm is over here, then I would probably not hit at this height because this would give him the chance to get me, but I would rather go a little bit lower, thereby demolishing his rib cage while I still have contact here. Should he do something with the other arm, then obviously there's many things that I can do from here. However, if you do not have contact to the opponent's arm, the game changes. Imagine that if the first thing that he feels is the pressure downward, then it, this would be like a block. And what do we do in Wing Chun? We flow around a block, we, throw, we flow around an obstacle and make use of it, right? So you cannot go right down because this will enable him to go in with a flexible bong so that ends up in your face in the worst case scenario. So what you do want to do is first of all you get contact with the opponent's arm and then you yield, keep pushing please, keep pushing, you yield and actually push yourself off the partner. Here are two components that come into play. The first one is the buffer. First of all you have to learn how to buffer the opponent's force so that he has the feeling as if, hey, I'm not there anymore. And then I use this, 
I use my low elbow that is relatively close to my body to push myself off it, right? So one more time, I don't go down directly because this is gonna end in heartbreak, but I wanna go forward, I buffer and I turn. It's a bit more complex, so let's just slow it down. I get in contact, I feel his, his force is going up, right? And since I have not had contact, first of all, I am not able to just go down here. So I absorb his force by allowing the wrist, the elbow and the chest and the hip and the knee and the whole body to turn into a steel spring to really absorb. So he has the feeling of, well, there's not much there. And when shortly before the elbow touches my body, this is when I turn. Let's do that a couple of times at full speed. Okay, Wing Chun community, this is it for this week's video. So today we covered the technique of Jam Sao, one of the four core techniques of the Wing Chun system. We already spoke about Tan Sao, we spoke about Kao Sao, and next week we're gonna cover the last one of those four techniques. Make sure to feed your brain, feed your mind, feed your body. Wing Chun is personal development. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.